Today we're going to be uh, speaking about Chelev. Uh, last time we spoke about a general introduction about uh, Nikur, and today we're going to be speaking about um, the first part of that, which is Chelev. Um, yeah, today is a little, again, is going to be a little bit general about Chelev, and then in the future we'll talk about specific applications of uh, where we do Nikur Chelev. Um, today's um, what I'm going to be speaking about, the organization of it, is very much follows the order and a lot of the information from um, the Sefer Seder Nikur from the Nirbat Rav, who has an introduction called Kol Itini Isr uh, which organizes and sets things up in a very clear way, which is we're going to follow, give or take, follow that order. Um, yeah, as follows. The Torah says, Kol Chelev Sharva Kesev Eizlo Sechelu. You can't eat the Chelev from uh, three kinds of animals, a, a cow, a sheep, and a goat. Because um, if you eat chelev from the animals that are brought as karbanas, um, then the person is, deserves karbanas for that. So the, the pasuk is giving a strong impression that the iser chelev is connected. Those that fat which is brought on the zbeach um, for from karbanas, um, then that from those animals and. And those fats that are brought on the Mizbeach, those are the ones we can't eat. Those are the ones, those are the ones you can't eat. And uh, from there we we'll learn out that if the, the fats in, in, a, in an animal, in a cow or sheep or goat, that are not brought on the Mizbeach, or the fats from another animal which are not, um, or, or the fat from an animal that's not brought on the Mizbeach at all, or from a bird, all of those are, are mutter, we call those shuman, those are not asr scale. Now, so if we want to know which chelav is also to eat, the Torah didn't tell us which, that, that's all the direction we get in the Chumash of which chelav we're not allowed to eat. So if we want to know um, more details of which chelav we're not allowed to eat, let's go to return to Nath Karbanis to see which, which chalav and which fats are poured on the Mizbeach that will help us understand um, which ones we're not allowed to eat. So the other Pasuk says like this, this is, the, this is what you should bring from a carbon slum you should bring on the Mizbech. It's a chelim, it's a machas, it's a kerv, it's called a chelim ashar, a kerv, it's a chelim ashar, a chelim ashar, a chelim ashar, a chelim So it tells us these different parts, I'm going to explain each of them in a minute, what they are, different types of fats that there are. It's a chelim ashar, a chelim ashar, a chelim ashar, a chelim and you should bring the ashar, a chelim and the chelim themselves on the Mizbech. So in the middle of that, it had mentioned different, four different types of, four different types of chelim, and those are the four types of chelim which are also. And there are as follows. Um, first is um, chel from chasis kerev. It's the first in the pasuk. The chel which covers the kerev. Uh, kerev means the intestines, the the, the, the digestive organs. Uh, intestines is too specific. The digestive organs. And what is that? Um, that's a very large layer of fat that stretches from the reish mei, called the duodenum. Um, the duodenum is the first, the beginning of the intestines coming out of the last stomach of the cow, out of the cava, and it sort of goes up and then around. Um, so it stretches from that. Now that the, the cava is on the right side of the animal, so it stretches from there, from, from du- it, it wraps down underneath around the wall of the kishkas, it goes all the way around up to up onto the left side of the cow, um, and we're to the middle of the first stomach of the cow, the first the carrot, the first stomach of the cow, the rumen, um, and that that wraps around completely around the whole a lot of the digestive parts of, of a lot of the intestines and digestive parts of, of the, the back half of the digestive parts of, of the animal. Um, and for those of you who are watching my video, we're going to pause for now and then twice later um, for for uh, to see how Rabbi Mita Ben David, um, the order of Sichel School, shows exactly how the, where, where that is. This is Hachelev Hamechase Es Hakerev. It's a big sheet that is covering the entire intestines like an envelope. It's an envelope, and that's the reason it's called Hachelev Hamechase Es Hakerev. So this is chelev also chaz v'sholem. Somebody eats kazais from this, it's chiyuv kores. So we'll take it out. So nobody will eat it. No one to eat it. If you do meliche, it won't help you. What do they now that's, that's the first one. Um, that's a chelev hamachas It covers over the 
the innards. Okay, then the next pasuk says, "Es kol chiyav ashar lekerev." Not not just one that goes that covers it; it's the one that's on the carob also. What's that? That's a different piece of fat. Um, that first, the first I should have mentioned, the first one is called the greater greater omentum. Okay, and this one is now called the lower omentum, and that is a, it's a piece of fat which covers uh, hemsis. That's the third stomach. The omentum. That's the third stomach of the cow, and part of the basic crisis, That's the second stomach of the cow. These are on the right side of the, of the animal. Um, and it, it goes over, uh, this is clear that goes over, it's machas, it's, it, it's alhakar, it's not machas, it's not like this big wrapper, <coughs> this one is alhakar. And we're going to see in a minute, uh, machuk, what, what about parts of it, um, that, of that fat which are on the keva, that's the fourth stomach also. So we'll see about that in a minute, because that's our second fat. Third keva, which is asr, is keva shal koyis, that's pretty straightforward, it's the fat that covers the kidneys. Um, that's, the, that's our third fact. And our fourth fact is a Hij al Haksalam, um, Asher al Haksalam, the Paskins of Asher al Haksalam, which is, it covers the flanks. The flanks are the um, the muscle and the back here for the animal. Uh, abdominal muscles all along the, 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 the ribs, g- coming up from the ribs and going down. I'm sorry, not from the ribs, I should say from the spine, and going all the way down. Um, going from the ribs back, back to the hips. Okay, so that, the, the, the fat that covers those is also also. Now, of these four types of chayil that there are, um, the Gemara makes some drushes. We're going to mention four drushes that the Gemara makes from about these um, about these psukim. And the first is that in the pasuk that talks about chayil, it says kol chayil shar v'kesev eizos chayil. So it mentions the three animals very specifically. And the Gemara darshans from there that the only chayil which is usher is chayil that is uh, brought as a carbon from all three of these animals. But a tail, um, what, what the Pasuk was, Chayel Ha'alia, the, 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 the tail is, an, is a part of an animal that's only brought from a sheep, and therefore the tail of other animals, the Chayel of other animals, of a shor and an A's, and A's are not considered Chayel. So we mentioned last time that there are certain, there's some nuclear that's done to the tail, but the, the fat that's in the, in the tail, although it's brought on the Mizbech for from a sheep, is not considered Chayel. Okay, that's one thing. Now, that's our first question. Now, back to the Pesukim of Bad Kopanis. The Pesuk says, Es achel ha-machas es ha-kerev, ve es kol achel v'asher ha-kerev. So, the Gemara Darshan, there's different questions, how we Darshan, Rashi says, we Darshan from the Vav of the Es, the Es kol achel, the Vav of that Pesuk, is to teach us um, that the only time the chel is aser, only time the chel is aser, if it's like chel ha-machas es ha-kerev. It has to be, the, even the chel ha I'm sorry, even the chel ha-machas es ha-kerev, Right. It has to be like the Chayel HaMachas as a Kerev. And the Gemara has some Machlitas, what that means. What does it mean that it has to be like them? What, what properties does it have to have? Now, there are some properties that the other Gemaras get, tell us about fat, about it being crumbly, and uh, 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 being, uh, when it rubs, you rub it in your hand, and it's hard to separate, but that, that's, not, that's not what the Gemara here is focusing on. The Gemara here has a Machlitas, what does it mean that it has to be similar to Chayel HaMachas as a Kerev? So, Rabbi Shmuel says, Rabbi Shmuel says that what that means is that it needs to be krum to niklaf. Krum means is that there's a, a, a membrane, some kind of a layer on top of the on top of the fat that has some kind of krum on it, and it's niklaf. It's so it's not attached very well. It's easy to peel that krum off to peel that krum off of the uh, off of the fat. That's what Rabbi Shmuel says. Rabbi Kiva says it, it needs to be krum to niklaf. It needs to be toys of krum to niklaf. So not only does it have to be krum and niklaf, it has to be a krum on top of it that you could peel that off, but it also has to be toysav. Toysav, Rashi explains, means is that the, the layer of fat lays like a, like a, like a, like a cloak, like a piece of clothing that just draped all over, all over the, the, the rest of the, the organs, and you can just lift it off, it can lift on and off completely, like as if it's like a, like it, uh, a piece of clothing that's sitting on top of there. So Rabbi Kiva is the makel. He says the only fat which is also is fat which is not, it has to be toys of krumenikov. Not just krumenikov, it has to be toys of krumenikov. We have the Gmore Daf Memtes. Rabbi Ishmael, he says that the simonim of chelev or osu, how do you know if this chelev is osu or muter? If it is toisav krum beniklav. Toisav means it's like a sheet, an envelope, covering, 
everything, and it is krum veniklaf. On top of it, we have a membrane that we can peel off. Here you see, you can peel off krum veniklaf. Now, the Gemara says there's an afkamina between these two sheets. There's a specific piece of fat which is an afkamina between them. And that is it. In order to explain it, we have to talk back about our cave. That's the fourth stomach that's on the right side of the cow. And the cave is located essentially a little lower than the hemesis and the basic crisis. So the cave it has a shape like a crescent moon, like, like a bow. Okay? It's talked about as looking like a bow. And, and there are, there's fat on the inside of that bow and on the outside. The fat on the outside that's running along the top edges of the bow, but the wider part of the bow is called the akashta. Um, that's the wider edge, and the part that's, the fat that fills in like the center of the bow, that's on the inner side of the bow, it's called the ayasara. Um, so the, the akashta fat, now, <coughs> the, the akashta fat is toiso krum vinaglav, and the Gemara says a little bit later that all, everyone agrees that that fat is also. But the fat that's on the inside, the ayasara fat, that fat is only krum vinaglav, it's not toiso. So, according to Rabbi Shmuel, that fat is also. According to Rabbi Kiva, um, that, that, that fat is a mutter. Um, and now, it happens to be that if that fat is on the Yasra, that fat is, that fat is according to Rabbi Kiva's mutter. Right next to it is fat that the Chev Asher al which covers the hemses and part of the base curses. That fat, everyone agrees with us, because that pack is toast of chromium nikla. But this part that's just on the that's in the ayasra, that part is a machlokes of Rabbi Shmuel and Rabbi Kiva, and, we, and um, uh, Rabbi Kiva says that is makel and says that that fat is not also. To it, we see the cable. This is the cable, the real stomach. The cave wall is built in the shape of a bow. You see my finger, I'm going like this. It's a bow. The bow has two chalovim. One stri- strap here, retzuo here. There it's called chelev de akashte. The chelev on the bow. The chelev of akashte is loose, like... So, therefore, it's also Be'achile. But the Chelev inside, in the in, inside, it's called De Ayasre. Yeser is string. So the string, that's Gemore Daf Memtes. The string of the bow, Rabbi Shmuel says that it is Chelev Amuter. You're allowed to eat this Chelev. What is so special? Now, there's a side issue going on there. The Gemara also, when Rabbi Kiva says his shita, essentially, when Rabbi Kiva, according to the gears of our Gemara, when Rabbi Kiva says his shita, um, he, also, he says Chelev Hadak in Asr. The Chelev that are on the intestines are Asr. Um, the Gemara explains somebody else that that means is, I'm sorry, the Gemara explains that that means is, that means is the, the fat that's on the, on the, uh, the duodenum, according to Moshe, there's a chel that's on the reshme, on the duodenum. So the, the, the there's a machlekes for showing them whether, is that only the sheet of Rabbi Kiva? I mean, does Rabbi Kiva say that it's a chel of Rabbi Kiva, Rabbi Shmuel, or Rabbi Shmuel, in this case, would be more makel than Rabbi Kiva? Or, if that's how Rashi says on Tzari Gimel, on Tzari Shonim say, or, is Rabbi Kiva saying it's Chelva Adak and Azasa? And of course, Rabbi, Rabbi Shmuel at least, Rabbi, Rabbi Shmuel is usually the, the Machmir over here. That's what Rashi on Mentes says. Um, on Mentes says. In fact, it's, it's, Rabbi Kiva points out this steer, and it's a Machmir to Shonim. Not to get us so much, because um, we, as I, meant, I was about to say, we pass on Rabbi Kiva, and since we pass on Rabbi Kiva, um, therefore, regardless of which way Rabbi Shmuel holds this, it's not so relevant, um, but it happens to be, that's a, that's a question, I'm not so sure exactly what Rabbi Shmuel holds that. Anyhow, so we pass on Rabbi, Rabbi Kiva, who's the mako about Tosef Krum and Niklav, um, and he holds, Rabbi, Rabbi Shmuel is the mako who holds that you, you need to have Tosef Krum and Niklav, and therefore, the fat, the fat that's on the Ayasra is mutter, but the 
Shachar says that the minig is to not eat that fat also. The Ramah says it a little stronger than that, that there's a little deep in, in, in the Prima Gautam, but that's exactly what the Ramah means, but we don't eat, he says we also don't eat the fat on the ass also, but that's not an Ikra din, that's a Chumrah, or this is Rabbanah, and possibly to not eat the fat on the ass, and some explain that that's because it's so easy to confuse the fat on the ass with the, with the Akashta, that therefore um, we don't eat that fat. Okay, so that was our second Joshua. Third Joshua is, it says, Achel HaMachas is a Kerev, there's Kol Achel HaMachas is a Kerev. Now, the Gemara is like this. If, if, if it says the chiv that's on the carrot, the, fi- the fat that's on the inner parts of, this, of the cow, well, why do I have to say the chiv that's machas is a carrot? Once it says the fat that's on the carrot, then of course that includes the fat that's, that's covering the carrot also. So why do we need both of them? Why have chiv on machas is a carrot and chiv on a carrot? So the Gemara says that this is, the, it, tell, it says this to make a, a point that the only fat which is also a is chilev that has to do with the digestive half of the animal, the back half of the animal, those are the fats that could potentially be also. But fat that's on the on the defanus, defanus means uh, did I say this like I'm sorry, this is Okay, to turn kind of, I'm sorry. And anyway, it's not like tomorrow. So this fat is not on the fat that's on the defanus, the fat that's on the front half of the animal, by the ribs, by the thoracic cavity, that fat is not con- that is not also. That's what we learned from this passage and Tosis brings it. Tosis brings it in the Gemara, but it's really Tosis Karim, that says that we learn from the fact that it had to repeat the Kher Machas's care and the Kher Vashar care teaches us that fat that's on the, the, the fondness is not usher. We'll see more about that next time when we speak about ribs. Okay, but fat that's on the fondness is not, is not going to be usher. Okay. Uh, the last rush of the Gemara that we're going to talk about is the, the, Pusik, the Pusik says Asher Avakasalam, that's on the the flanks, the, the sides of the animal, the muscle on the back of the animal. So the, the Gemara tells us that the owl teaches us that the only chile which is usher is chile which is on muscle. But chile which is covered by something else, chile which is covered, which is not alaxon, it's indexon, that chile is mutter. So the only fat that can be also is fat that's exposed, that you could see it from the, so to speak, from the outside, or I guess from the inside of the cow, that you could see it, <coughs> that it's there. But chile that's covered up, is not cannot be also. Now the Gemara says it's, that even though that's true, the chil the tus the, the tusi masna, the, the chil which is under the loins, the, the loins are the, is the is the back is the, the the muscle along the spine from the ribs down to the hips. So in a human that's in the back, they're in the back, and the cow that's on the top, um, it's, it's along it's the muscles on the two sides of the ribs, on um, two sides of the spine um, between the ribs and the hips. Um, so the, the chil, the tusi masna, that's underneath the, the masna, that's underneath there, the Gemara says that fat is also. No, so wait, how could it be also? It's, it's covered up. So the Gemara says, even though it's covered up, it's generally covered up, when the animal moves around, when the animal's alive and it moves around, you, it gets uncovered, I guess just the way that the, the parts of the body move around, it gets uncovered, and therefore that um, fat is not considered to be covered, it's considered to be fat that is exposed, and it, it qualifies as al haqsalam, and Excuse me, and that fat, and therefore that field is usher. Okay, so that sounds a little esoteric. Next time, when we talk about ribs, we're going to see that how that has a practical application for us, um, why that has an application for us. Okay, so we had these four different drushes that help sort of straighten out exactly which field is mutter or usher, and some different cheetahs about those khalil. Now, um, the, the Kamara says another thing. The Kamara says that khalil only applies to fat, but chutim are not usher. What a chutim, the word chutim is like a cord or a string, and it sort of can mean sort of anything that's long and thin, like a vein or a nerve or a tendon even maybe. It means all different kinds of things. But the Gemara says chutim are not usher. Only, only chil is usher. Now that's on the din deraisa, that chutim are not usher. But um, sometimes chutim pass through chil, or pass right next to chil, and we, and we say in the Rabbanon that they're yonik min ha-chilav. They, they take in, they suck in from the chilav. Either there's a residue there, or some kind of a blea, um, that after the animal dies, some kind of a passage of, of chilav passes into these things, mid we say that. And therefore, um, mid there are certain chutim which are going to be awesome. So, in that context, the Gemara says this, chamishi chutim There are five chutim out there. Tlasim shem tarba, I'm sorry, there are five chutim that have to be removed from an animal. Plus a mishum tarba, train mishum dama. Three of them are because of chelav tarba and chelav, and train mishum dama. Two of them have to be removed because of dama. 
course, today we're going to talk about the chelav ones. There. And which ones are the chelav ones? The tachli, the kafli, the, the kulisa, the shum tarba. Those are the, those three are the ones that have to be kept for shum chelav. And the Gemara says the nafkamina between whether it's chelav, whether it's dam, is that if it's dam, you just have to drain it out. We'll talk about that when we talk about dam. But if it's chelav, then every bit has to be removed because chelav is chelav. Well, of course, it's chelav with rabbanon. It's not yet going to chelav, but if it's chelav, it has to be removed, and every drop has to be taken out. Now, what are these three chutin that the Gemara? said are Yonik and Achilab. One is the Tachli, that's the Tchal, that's the spleen. Uh, another one, the third one is the the, uh, the Kulisa, which is the Kloyas. It's a Chutin coming from the kidneys. Okay, those are, those, that's what they are, what they are. Um, not so relevant to us because they're not usually eaten, um, taken as kosher, but if they were, then these Chutin would be us as well. And the middle one was uh, the Kafli, the Kafli. Uh, and that means the Ksalim, again, the, the flanks, the sides of the animal. Now, so the Gemara said these three, the chutim coming from, there are three chutim, or three parts of the chutim that have to be taken out. Now, what's a little strange is that, the, that's what the Gemara says. Right before the Gemara said that, just before that, the Gemara says is, chutim sheba uketz asurun. The chutim that are in the uketz, or something else, we, we have not defined, are asur also. And then, and then, right after saying that the chutim and the uketz are asur, then the Gemara says something else. The Gemara says, you should know that the Chut and the Kafli have different branches. And the Gemara describes how the branches of, this, of these Chut and, Chut and the Kafli are and how exactly how they branch out and how they, exactly what has to be pulled out. Not, not so relevant for us right now. But, so what's going on here? First it says, Chut and Sheb Uketz are also. Then it talks, switches to Kafli. <coughs> and then it says, there are five Chut and one of them is the, the Kafli, which we would be expecting, but where's the Chutim of the Ukits? So, if we just said there's a part, there are Chutim and the Ukits that have to be taken out, well, why didn't it list it later on when it said there are five Chutim? And what's, what's happening here that we're switching back and forth? So, Rashi learns, uh, Rashi learns that the Kafli and the Ukits is exactly the same thing, just two different words to describe the same thing. So, when it says, um, Chutim or Ukits, assume that's one person said that those are Asr, okay, and then the word, and then in fact, that's one of the five, one of the five Chutim, uh, which is the Chutim the Kafli, and the Gore in the middle switched words and said, now, the, the, the Kafli has these different branches about how they have to be taken out, um, gives some details about how it has to be taken out. The Shulchan Aruch Paschus, like, brings that shita, it's in Samach Dalad, which is the Simit about Chela, brings that the Chutin, uh, the Kafli, exactly how the Gemara describes them, he, he uses, he doesn't use the word Kafli, um, he says, he says that those Chutim have to be, um, those Chutim have to be uh, taken out, those two have to be taken out with the whole description of the way the Gemara says it. Now, there, there's a little bit of a um, question on that, because that's in Simon Sanoch Dalad, where it talks about the the uh, Chelev. But in Simon Sanoch Hei, the Mechaber brings another Shita, and that's the Shita of the Ramam, who learned the Chut Yishim Ha'ukets, or Chut Yidam. Okay? Lech HaMishin asks, why aren't they listed as one of the five? That's not our question for today. But he passing, he brings near what the, the Ram said, that Chut Yishim Ha'ukets is not Chut Yidikafli, it's a different Chut. And that, and that put is also Mishim Dam. Um, so the Prim Gadam says, what's going on here? Is it, is, do you pass like Rashi, do you pass like Dram? So the Prim Gadam wants to say it's a Suffolk, which way you pass it. But, of course, the, the Chela part is the Mohammer, as we mentioned. It's Mohammer to be considered Chela, because if it's considered Chela, everything has to be removed. Okay, so, so we have these, these three, these three Chutim of Chela that have to be taken out. Um, um, we have these three chutim of that have to be taken out. As I mentioned, um, the chutim of kaf are the ones that are the most going to concern us. And we're going to talk about that next time. These chutim of kaf, the other two chutim are not so relevant to us. Okay, and in addition to the um, chutim of kaf, the, the chutim that have to be taken out, the Gemara says also, the Hamishi Kami Havi, there are also five krumim. Okay, now the Gemara first says, uh, a little earlier, the Gemara says that all chalev, all chalev, which is asr, is covered with a chrome, some kind of a mem- always has a membrane on top of it. And the Gemara says that there are chamishi fa- krumim, there are five krumim, and again, plus mishem tarba, uche mishem dama, three of those krumim are chelev related, two of them are dam related, we're not going to talk about the dam ones, but the chelev ones are exactly the same ones that we mentioned before, the tachli, the kafli, the kulisa, they, each three of those have a, have a, <coughs> have, have a krum on top of it, and those, that krum has to be taken out. Now, um, the, the, if you look, Gemara explains, um, and the way it's brought in the din, is that two of those krum are also with the one, one that's on the wider part of the, of the spleen, it's called the dud, or in English says the helum, um, that's, that part is also, is also with the has, has <coughs> potential that it has real halo into it, 
and on the, the outer one on the on the cloyas, okay, so the tachli and the kul and the kulisa, the the, the, the chrome that's on those are the ones that are smooth raisa. With the you can eat the chrome that's on the narrow side of the spleen and the lower part of the membrane and on the and on the kafli. Uh, and then there are other chromin that are usher, uh, which are just the minhag. Um, and for example, the Ramah brings that the colon and the rectum, the, the hydrocanta and the chakulis on tavachia, uh, tavachia, those are also those are also mishum uh, midhik tenaitos. Uh, and as I mentioned, in mishum we will in the, in the coming um, shiurim we will talk about um, some of the key parts of chile that are relevant to us halachah